Before we get started with today's show, I just want to remind you that you can save 10% on your order with Symphony of Balloons, a luxury balloon company that also offers a 360 camera. Just simply mention you heard about them on Breaking Through Glass Ceilings. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this episode of Breaking Through Glass Ceilings. I'm your host, Brian H. Waters. This show, of course, is brought to you by B. Waters Productions, where if you want to bring and preserve your memories in high definition, hit us up. That's me. Folks, it's the Uncomfortable Conversation season. And there's been a lot of things that's happening. Um, you know, we are, the NBA Finals is set. We have two teams. It's going to be fun because we're going to have the Boston Celtics taking on the Dallas Mavericks. Here's what's interesting. Stephen A. Smith, has had some quite interesting things to say about two a, a star player on each team. Now, both teams come in with two star-studded folks, two future Hall of Famers, might I add, in my belief. Um, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown lead the Boston Celtics, even though Jason Jalen Brown was not an all-NBA player. He's, I mean, he's the highest-paid player in the league for now. He's that guy. And as far as the Mavericks side, you have them being led by both Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. Let's start with Jalen Brown. Now, recently, Stephen A. Smith said he was not marketable. Said Jalen Brown wasn't marketable, and this is what his source told him because, you know, He's maybe not the nicest person. Now, this, of course, made a lot of airwaves because people, you know, saying that he isn't marketable and that, you, you know, because he might not be the biggest rah-rah guy and everything. But... It's just weird, like, why are we talking about this? Why are we having this conversation? You know what I mean? Um, it was so much that even Mercedes Monet, AEW TBS champion, you know, say that she tweeted, Hey, Stephen A. Smith, from one goat to another, the CEO wants to sit down with your source. Jalen Brown from one superstar to another. It's, I just won my championship, and I'm excited to see you win yours. Keep lifting the community the way you've been doing. Go Celtics. Everybody knows Mercedes Monet is a huge Celtics fan. She has said that she will be at the finals. Now, like I said, people saying, like, Stephen A. Smith swords, and because he said they one of his NBA sources text him, Jalen Brown is not like due to his ego, and that's why he's not marketable. He was asked to reveal his source by Jalen Brown. And there was a lot of people, even Detroit Pistons legend Isaiah Thomas called out Stephen A. Smith on this one and told him, reveal your source. And, you know, there's some issues because we all know that if you're a journalist, you don't reveal your sources. You just don't. And, and like, you know, I know it was said, like, you wouldn't have a job. And I used to, I remember, like, there was terms when I was in journalism school. I should say probably before I went to journalism school officially. I was like, man, so what's this whole source thing, right? And you learn, like, no. Like, your source is somebody, yeah, who feeds you. And they can be all different types of people, right? But if you start telling... They're not. It's basically, you ask somebody to snitch, and that's not going to happen. It's just not. I know somebody I knew said when they started a job, they saw somebody who had a whole binder, said, these are phone numbers. That's all their sources. Now, I'll give you a little bit of insight. Sources can be agents, could be family members, could be players, GMs. You know, there's always like this anonymous source person, you know. 
And, you know, we just li- we've always lived in that world where everybody's going to keep talking. You know, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Shout out to Storyline Tees for the shirt, the Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt. Hellraiser, shout out to Nate, doing great work over there. Storyline Tees, appreciate you, brother. And congratulations, congratulations to him. If you follow Storyline Tees NYC on Instagram, you'll see his accolade. But like in wrestling, there's always sources, right? Because there's writers, there's uh, producers, people who just work backstage and they'll send something, you know, they'll tell somebody this or they'll tell somebody that, hey, you know, this is going to happen. I remember there was a time at ESPN, Mike and Mike, before the show was ended, this is a show, it's probably on record somewhere, y'all probably heard me say, I used to work on that show. I worked on that show from... June of 2014 through February 2015. And when I was working there, one of the things like, you know, I didn't see um, Golik and Greeny all the time, like separate. Like if you walk down the hallway, you might see one or the other. I never saw them like together. But when they was on air, the chemistry was great, whatever. As time moved along, before the show ended, I, th- I want to say like five to six months, they was like, oh, there's rumors that they don't get along. They barely speak. They just show up, do their job. And then Golik said, no, nah, who's, who's talking, right? They should reveal themselves. They're cowards and all this. But that's the thing. Like, there's sources everywhere. There's always somebody talking. Um, so I, I never expected Stephen A to reveal his source. And I think it's just funny that everybody... You know, this has been a big deal. This is a story. Mercedes Monet wants to sit down with the source. We know she's not. But I will say this. I'd love to see Mercedes Monet sit down with Stephen A. Smith on first take. Here's an opportunity, AEW. Have Mercedes Monet go on um, first take and sit down with Stephen A. Smith and talk about it. Now, maybe she will. Maybe it's already being booked. But I'm putting it out there right here on Breaking Through Glass Seals. That's what I want to see. Speaking of another person Stephen A. Smith had heat with, and it's all changed, but I'm going to talk about it. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, when during the pandemic, he was very vocal about not getting vaccinated. He was very vocal about, you know, the freedom and the choices and everything. And then there was the stuff he published. There was, you know, he shared something that was anti Semitic. But, and to the point, everybody thought he was like just a bad teammate. You know, this, all this stuff is coming up, right? Because we all know, like, he was playing with Kevin Durant and that didn't work. The Brooklyn experience didn't work for anybody. And you, you if you remember when KD and Kyrie went there and Anthony Davis and we went to the Lakers. We was like, oh, yeah, penciled in. Lakers, Nets in the finals, baby. We never got a hint of it. Not even both teams in the conference championship at the same time. I don't even know if the Nets got out of the first round. I might be wrong. I do remember. Maybe that was the second round when Katie's foot was there, and then it didn't count for three. Nonetheless, you know, then there was the talk when he was in Cleveland. He didn't want to play with LeBron James. And then he went to Boston. Obviously, that didn't last. But now, Kyrie Irving is so beloved, and I love it. We all know that him and Kobe Bryant had a great relationship. They was real close. That was like his big brother. You know, he was even talking about, like, they played together against each other. It's very interesting um, to see how the careers parallel where Kobe went from this villain, right? Because everybody, oh, he snitched on Shaq, all that. And he was so arrogant, this young punk kid. And then everything changed. And then suddenly, later on, Kobe Bryant was like, everybody was like, oh, yeah, go Kobe, go Kobe, as he led the Lakers to two championships with three final, three consecutive finals appearances. Um. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Kyrie and Luka here. I personally, I'm putting this on record, Mavericks and six. I just feel like 
the championship experience Kyrie Irving have. Yes, I know Brown and Tatum has been there before, and you know they might have a better team. But I just, it's just, it just feels like it's the Mavericks' time. How cool would that be, though? Kyrie Irving beating the Boston Celtics and standing on the logo. I'm a Lakers fan, so I would love it. Um, but yeah, congratulations to Kyrie Irving. I did see Stephen A. Smith dial back the comments. You know, and to be fair, you know, he kept it about basketball, even though he said that he wouldn't sign Kyrie. Kyrie, you know, nobody should be dealing with him. The whole, all that mess, it's water under the bridge. But everybody's like, oh, no, nah, Stephen A., we got the receipts. And those, ten, those things tend to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, are you in the gym every week? Are you looking to kind of keep yourself cool while you work up a nasty sweat? Well, I got a, the best thing for you. Cooling bands, bandanas, cooling towels, and so much more. Go to Vertical Athletics. Get your favorite team in MLS or MLB. Or guess what? Now they have a custom option so you can upload your own logo. And you can save 10% at checkout when you enter the code Brian H. Waters. Go to verticalathletics.com. Use the code Brian H. Waters to save 10% on some of your best cooling gear. Um, I'm going to go into some positive news as I transition to baseball before I go into the uncomfortable conversation. Uh, and that starts off with the Negro Leagues. Negro League stats will are now officially in the MLB record books. Now, there was always this thing where there was the Negro Leagues, so, you know, you couldn't have black people playing against white people back in the day. What would have happened? There were like cross promotional games, I guess. I don't know if they were, I'm pretty sure they wasn't official, but probably like, you know, they said Babe Ruth played against some of those players. But now we have a new batting champion, <laughs> which is crazy to think, right? Uh, years later, not even a whole century later, but we have a new batting champion, and his name is Josh Gibson. You know, um, he by those records being migrated, Josh Gibson, his career. I'm trying to pull this up. Um, you know, his career batting average is. Uh, 372. So yeah, it's very interesting that he took down Ty Cobb, that his place in history is above Ty Cobb. There's always the history that he was a known racist, that he was very, he did get suspended for running into the stands, attacking a fan who was heckling him. He choked a black groundkeeper's wife because the groundskeepers didn't do what he wanted them to do, and him and Ty Cobb got into it. You know, these are stories I've read, right? So I just found that very interesting. And now Josh Gibson is the man who is the all-time leader for batting average. And then he has, you know, there's a couple other numbers of lists, I think on-base percentage as well, now that they've integrated these. And I think it's great. You know what I mean? Um, career slugging percentage. He took over Babe Ruth. So, hmm, you know, maybe now it's time to recognize him as the new GOAT. I mean, my GOAT is always going to be Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, that's the one I've seen play. I, I, I think, like, GOAT is a personal thing. You know, people get in these arguments about LeBron versus Jordan all the time. And then there's Kobe. I, let's get this. I think greatest of all time is a personal thing. Who is personal to you? Because what's personal to you may not be personal to me. Because at the end of the day, it's just an opinion. So in baseball, my goat is King Griffey Jr. In basketball, my goat is Kobe Bryant. And in football, my goat is Ray Lewis. Case closed. And then if we go into WNBA, it's Lisa Leslie. If we go into hockey, it's Wayne Gretzky. But, you know, that's a different conversation. Um, shout out to Josh Gibson. 
uh, now the leader. I'm glad to see these. You know, it, it's one of those things, right? The Negro Leagues have been a thing in the past, but we paid homage to. But now it's like, hello, black people always existed. These, all this, like all this could have been done years ago, right? But I'm glad to see things moving forward. We got different people at the helm. Now let's just make baseball interesting again. Listen to the press box uh, with Brian Curtis. He had Mallory Rubin on to understand why exactly why I said that when you talk about the media coverage of baseball. Um, Jorge Lopez name may not ring a bell to a lot of people, uh, but if you're a baseball fan in Baltimore, you know the name very well. He was an all star for the Orioles. Um, then he got traded. And then I believe they re-signed him in last year, like towards the end of the year. Um, and then, you know, he didn't come back or maybe something like that. But either way, he was playing for the New York Mets at the beginning of this week. I record on Friday. Um, but on Wednesday, he, you know, he had a meltdown. He got upset and he was being, you know, he threw his glove in the stands. Here's the crazy part. Here's where the issue lies. He said, now, Jorge Lopez's first language is not English. As with a lot of baseball players, there are a lot of baseball players who use translators. I learned even today, Anthony Santander, who plays for the Baltimore Orioles, speaks English, but he always has a translator right there because even though he understands he's gotten better at the language, he may misinterpret something. So it's there for protection. Well, Jorge Lopez was, you know, he's upset at his performance. And because of that, he, you know, he let it all out. To be honest with you. And he said that, you know, he got misquoted because of what he was trying to say. And he said, I think I've been on the worst team in probably the whole fucking MLB. And that sent everybody went crazy. Now, I remember when I heard this quote, right? I was like, wait a minute. Did, did, did my guy really say he's been on the worst team in the MLB? I'm like, wait a minute. This is crazy. Because first of all, who's bold enough to say that? You saying something that, like that isolates all, you from all of your teammates. Maybe, maybe a couple who may believe you, but most of the time it's like, Bro, you just threw everybody under the bus, man. That is that, that, a little crazy right there. And just for the record, the Mets are 23 and 30, uh, yeah, 23 and 33. They are in fourth place in the American League East. Four games ahead of the Florida, mm, showing my age, four games ahead of the Miami Marlins, who are 20 and 37. The worst team in the MLB, the Chicago White Sox. 22. But that's my record. And then it came out that, well, then he was DFA'd, for people who do not know, designated for assignment, which essentially means released from the team, right? But then somebody else can, like, claim him from waivers. Like, basically, everybody got an opportunity. They can claim him, right? Um, yeah. And, you, you know, they was like, well, it wasn't necessarily the comments, but it was more so him, you know, him losing his cool, throwing everything into the stands. And then we found, you know, he wrote a message. And what he meant to say, you know, what he meant to say was, I've probably been, he said, oh, I'm going to make sure uh, I had it right here. I just want to make sure I get this quote exactly right. Um, Because, uh, even before we get there, uh, SNY's Steve Gelbs said, just to clarify, I didn't fully understand. You Did you say I'm on the worst team? Is that what you had said? Yeah, probably it looked like. Now, 
again, isolation, everything. What he meant to say, though, is on his Instagram, he posted this. He posted a long... Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but what he meant to say was the worst teammate probably in the fucking MLB. And then he goes in to say, thanks media for making it worse. And I've seen a lot of people talking about this. And one of the things that came up, which I agree with, is that, you know, it felt like he was failed. There should have been a translator right there just in case. Because, but then again, if he's saying I'm probably been on the worst, I'm the been on the worst team. Maybe he did feel that way. I'm not going to put thoughts in his head, but you know, two and two is like, well, if he says this, maybe he was feeling that way because he felt no support from anybody. But there should have been a translator right there. You know what I mean? Um, so it's unfortunately he say it's unfortunate he say he had no plan no intention on disparaging the Mets organization. So he was frustrated about his personal performance. Now, unfortunately, with everything, and this is why mental health is important, you know, because I want to send my love to him. He had just learned that his 11-year-old son, who suffers from familial Mediterranean fever, is waiting a transplant. So when you're dealing with that, it's like, you know, it's so much going on and you're still trying to do your job, right? Here's a man trying to provide for his family, still trying to do his job. And so it's, um, you know, it's very unfortunate. So we send love to him. Maybe he'll be back with the Orioles. Um, you know, who knows? We'll have to find out uh, when we, you know, hear about this. But. You know, all love go out to Jorge Lopez. Hey, and guess what? If he did mean it, hey, I respect it. I'm just saying, no, I'm not a Mets fan, so it's not going to hit me different. You know, I would have, oh, he said that about the Orioles. Oh, man, well, bye. But no, I respect I respect that he said it. But obviously, he apparently didn't mean to say it. So, um, but yeah, let's move on. Eminem. <laughs> oh, boy. Eminem today, Friday, dropped a new song, Houdini. And it is not making good headway because he decided to, you know, he decided to drop Meg Thee Stallion's name on. And, you know, uh, this, in USA Today writes, this guy's famous, the guy famous for cutting down peers in his song hasn't lost the venomous touch. Roping in a double entree with, and here's what he said. If I was to ask Megan, Meg, Megan the Stallion, if she would collab with me, would I really have a shot at a feat? And it's like, bro, now there's somebody out there right now saying the world is sensitive. Why are we doing this? You know, and I'm like, I, I remember even when, I think it was after Kobe died. I think Meek Mill said something about him and people say, like, well, it's just music. So I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to hear a lot of people say that, unfortunately. But I do think it's unfortunate that. Like, uh, some things just, like, uh, some things, people just not creative. It was a couple weeks ago, or several weeks ago, people was resurfacing uh, Swerve Strickland, AEW World Champions lyrics, where, um, you know, as, as he said, like, basically, black woman's black and ugly or something like that. And it's just like, you hear like you hear all these sides of things, right? And then this thing with music is that are things off um are things off limits? 
And I think the sometimes it shows like some people just not creative. It's like, oh, that line didn't hit the way you wanted it to. I do think it's unfortunate. Why would you say, you know, just talking about Meg the Stallion getting shot in the foot, we all know it was a public case. You know, she essentially, I believe she lied to try to protect him from, you know, essentially getting killed by the police and, you know, and then revealed the truth. It's a lot to that story. But talking about it, you know, getting shot in the feet, like, okay, she did get shot in the foot. Like, bro, come on now. And I, you know, people, somebody said, and y'all invited him to the cookout. You know, y'all invited him to the cookout. And that's one of those things like, bro, you know, we gotta, we gotta get uh, rid of that, you know? So, but, man, you know, I just don't think it's, I don't think it's cool personally. Like why, you know, just like leave this woman alone. At the end of the day, why are we still hearing about Meg the Stallion getting shot in the foot in lyrics? You know what I mean? Like, just leave her alone. Let her live. All right. And last thing for today, I'm going to talk about the notorious B.I.G. His mom uh, revealed, like, uh, was quoted in the Rolling Stones magazine that she wanted to slap Biggie in the face. Now, before I do that, I'm going to take this time to give a shout out to my boy, Justin Tinsley. He wrote It Was All a Dream, Biggie and the World and Made Him. Uh, You can get that on Amazon and everything. I'm actually in the middle of listening to it. But yeah, so it's really good. You know, he goes into like, you know, life and death of B.I.G. And just like, you know, you get a very good background. Like I learned about his mother how she moved to uh, New York from Jamaica and everything. But yeah, she spoke with, she spoke with the Rolling Stone and said she wants to slap the daylights out of the, out of Sean Combs. Called out his government. Yeah. <laughs> she, she wants to slap the daylight out of him. She said, you know, just reading like seeing the videos and allegations make her sick to her stomach. You know, um, there was, there was the things that came out this week that talked about when Diddy was on the Rolling Stones magazine in 97. And it was like, right before the No Way Out album came out. And they wanted to put Biggie on there because uh, Biggie's mother, I mean, Biggie had just died. So they wanted to put him on there. And they said, nah, Diddy was like very like, no, he's dead. I'm, I, it's my time, you know? And they was like, you, you're going to have many, uh, let me, uh, you know, they they tried them like, look, you're gonna have many video many opportunities. I need but he said no. And they said he allegedly, let's make sure, allegedly blocked the cover. You know, that it was and this is what former bad boys uh former bad boy president Kirk Barrows told um he was, you know. He told the Roll when the Rolling Stones approach Diddy, and you know Kirk was uh, Bad Boy's co-founding partner and president, and you know he said he was telling him, "Let's make it Biggie. You'll have the chance for a cover of Future." And he's like, "No, he's dead. I'm putting. I'm on. I'm on. I'm putting out in July. I need to be on the cover of Rolling Stone." And then they said two years later, Biggie's death had been big business. And, uh, Combs got his cover two years later. He acknowledged how Biggie's death had been big business. I think his passing added to the fame. That's what the uh, what Kirk Burrow said. And yeah, it's crazy. But are we surprised? You know, we seen all these things come out about Diddy. Are we really surprised? The video was so unfortunate. It was so ugly. 
And, you know, it, it, it was, you know, it was ugly. And, you know, Biggie's mom, you know, I'm, I'm you know, shout out to Valletta Wallace. You know, unfortunately, you know, having to hear this stuff, live through this stuff again, you know, I'm pretty sure like she heard that quote. I'm pretty sure it didn't make her feel well. That was her only son, you know? So, um, yeah, it's just unfortunate. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. It would be nice to see by the end of 2024, Diddy and Donald Trump in jail or prison together. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, do not let anybody place a ceiling above your success. Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at Brian H. Waters. Make sure you follow me on threads, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm here. I'll be back next week. Shout out to Storyline Tees for the tee shirt, Stone Cold Hell Razor. I love this shirt. Um, Storyline Tees. Nate is always doing great work. Make sure you check out his podcast as well. Take care, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support this podcast by wearing a t shirt, whether it's the one that says breaking through glass ceilings, or the one that says no ceilings above success, simply go to foryourwear.com. Also, you can support some of your other favorite podcasts and content creators, including those wrestling girls, Seahawk, and the wrestling club. And you can support some of your favorite independent wrestlers, including Jay Bougie, Trisha Dore, Chaz the Dawn. Shoot, all the pure ignorance is on there. So go on foryourwear.com. Go under the personalities. You'll find Brian H. Waters and buy a t-shirt. And remember, I'll give you a shout out on the show. Podcasters and gamers, we all know it can be intense. We're talking, we're getting hyped, we're passionate. Sometimes we need a boost. Well, you can get that by getting Rogue Energy. Rogue Energy is the number one supplement for podcasters and gamers. And they have tons of different flavors, including Strawberry Burst, Tropical Breeze, and Cotton Candy. And you can save 10% by putting in the code BRIANH at checkout. So go to RogueEnergy.com and enter the code BRIANH to save money. Are you a podcaster who is looking to share clips from your show in the simplest way possible? Well, I have the best solution, and that's Opus Clip. Opus Clip allows you to take the link to your show, upload it, and then they will clip off some of the best moments. And it allows you to edit it, change the captions, change the colors, and they also give you a viral score so you know which clip can potentially generate more buzz for your show. So if you're looking to do that, click the link in the bio, sign up for Opus Clip, and go viral with some of the best content from your show.